Hello everyone, today I will be showing you how to back up your movies. So, for today, I'm going to be backing up Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, classic. You want to do this for reasons of, in case you want to keep your DVDs forever, um, keep them from getting scratched or whatnot, you want to have a backup saved to your hard drive. So I'm going to go ahead and put the DVD in, and we'll get started. Alright, first things first. You want to download a, a program called DVD Fab. Uh, the latest version is DVD Fab 9. I will put the links in the description below. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. It takes a little while. If you haven't seen the movie Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, I recommend it. It's by it's got the characters Steve Martin and Michael Caine in it. It's a comedy. Awesome. Alright, now DVD Fab has this weird little hiccup whenever it wants to start. I'm not sure if it's just installed on my computer wrong or if it's for everybody. But, uh, a little notification will pop up. Eventually, there it is. Fail to initialize burning engine. I'm not sure why it does this. Maybe it won't work for you or maybe it won't happen to you. Just hit OK, you'll be fine. Now, DVD Fab, you do have to pay for the program, it's about 30 bucks. But it has a free, um, free service to it. It's called this HD decryptor. You want to enable that. What this does is it breaks through the security of the DVD, so that you can rip it to your computer. Now, from what I understand, at this point, it is not illegal because you bought the DVD, so you bought the rights to the DVD, so you are technically allowed to back it up to your computer for all those you know lawyers out there who are a little worried about this process so the DVD fab program will now go through the cracking process open up your DVD and it'll show you uh, the main movie now down here it's got output you can either put DVD 5 or DVD 9 for this case we're going to use DVD 9 because that will be the full length of the DVD if you were planning on burning it to a, an extra disc later, so you would have the original in storage and you would just use your extra disc for, you know, it to get trashed, you know, in the house, got kids, mm. scratch things, you would put that in DVD 5 so it'll compress it down to that size. For this purpose, we want full clarity because it's going to stay in a hard drive, plenty of space, we're going to go with DVD 9. Now, automatically selected will be the biggest title. DVDs are broken down into titles. Um, the biggest one is the movie, you know, other, other titles would be like special features, um, little clips, you know, bloopers that are on the DVD itself, you don't really need those. Now save to. For this process, I usually say save to movie folder. You go ahead and click on it and then you choose the directory you want it to save. In this case, I want it to save to my desktop. So I select that folder and then you hit start and then you let it go, that's it. It takes about 20 minutes. It'll rip the movie to your computer. I've already done this in advance, so we don't have to, you know, wait for the whole process to happen. It'll rip into here. It'll put the folder main movie, and in there is your DVD. Now, right now, it looks just like a regular DVD. You know, it's all broken up into these, you know, Bob files, whatever those mean. You don't want that. You want to break it down into a nice, easy to watch video file. That's where this program Handbrake comes in. Now, Handbrake is a freeware software that you can download. I'll also put the link in the description below. Description below. You want to open it up. You choose Source, Folder, and then you choose the movie. Third Round Scoundrels. It'll load up into here. Now, for the best quality of it, you want to go over here to the right where it says Presets and hit High Profile. This will automatically set all the settings to the best clarity possible. Now, also, if the DVD had other languages, say Spanish or French, you could add extra tracks here, right into the font. So, for our example, I'm going to add Spanish. Espanol. Now, choosing the high profile, it, it puts two different tracks of audio in there. One is for surround sound, one is just for regular stereo. Now I'm going to imitate that with the Spanish here, so they're both the same, same codecs. You can also add subtitles. So I'm going to add English. You want to hit default. 
if you hit burn in it'll actually burn the subtitles into the video so you won't be able to disable them later on it may get annoying for those people who don't like subtitles I like them because I have bad hearing uh, you can also add other languages so in this case I'm also going to add Spanish because my grandma you know she's Hispanic that's all she knows now it's always good to do a little preview before you uh, commit to the converting process because this process takes about you know 30 45 minutes so in total it's going to take you about an hour to do one movie but to get the preview done it takes you know, 20 seconds always good to do when the preview is done I like to use VLC player I'm going to do a review later on uh, VLC player it is the best video player I've found so far um, it's really nice because you can also stream that to other movies or other other things and it has these options so in your sub in the subtitle track you can see it right here you got English you got Spanish ready to go you can also change the audio as well Espanol. great way to learn other languages watching them in different languages and reading them in your own after you've got all this set up your audios and subtitle files everything else is good to go this is just extra you just go ahead and click start and it does its own thing now if you want to start mass you know backing up your movies say you got like a couple like a couple hundred movies back in your library at home you can you can rip them one at a time but when it comes to handbrake the longer process see down here it looks like it's gonna take an hour for this movie you can actually queue them up so you can have like 5 10 15 as many movies as you want in here and whenever your computer whenever your computer finishes this process you can tell it to hibernate log off or or straight up shut down the computer so you don't lose electricity. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this process because what do you know? I have the movie right here. I'm gonna get rid of these. Up. There it is. Now, in the case of naming a movie, I would suggest doing it like this. You want to have the movie title, and then in brackets the year the movie came out. So, for example, this movie came out in 1988. And then in quotations, this is what I like to do. I like to put in the format of the DVD. So if I rip it myself from straight from a DVD, I put DVD rip. If I'm converting from a TV recording, I would put 480p. When ripping from a Blu-ray disc, I will show that later, you can choose either 720p or 1080p depending on the settings that you choose during the ripping process. That'll be a whole nother tutorial. And the reason it's named this way is so that it can easily be implemented into the program called XBMC. I will do a review on that later and teach you how to use it. XBMC is a library software that allows you to categorize all these movies into a nice easy to see format where you can choose them from genre, year, title, director, you can even put child settings on there so it's ready like safe for the kids. Well that's about it. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope this video helps you and you know, moving on.